Hi, and welcome back to another video about OS Top 10. Today we're going to talk about the security misconfiguration security issue that there is. It's called A6 security misconfiguration. My name is Daniel Ellebeck, and let's begin. So the agenda today is we're going to talk about what it is. This is the security misconfiguration, how common it is, and how to fix it. And of course, we have a source right here where you can follow the link or just go to OWASP.org and click on the OWASP Top 10 project to find the A6 security misconfiguration part. So what is it? First of all, security uh, misconfiguration uh, can in many cases be um, thought about as a hardening process or the lack of a hardening process. Missing security hardening or incorrect permissions on a server or application could be uh, could lead to, to what is called security misconfiguration. Unnecessary feature supports are available. So if you have a server or some, some sort of service where you uh, have some features, let's say for example that you can delete a user but you never use it, you never need it, then why have it? Why have a port open for FTP if you have no FTP server on your server that is should be exposed to the outside default accounts is another really uh, bad thing i see many people forgetting to not use the root user for for example mysql services or just any linux account uh, disable your super admin super administrators so you can only use them local you cannot ssh to them for example and create users Uh, for the actual purpose of the job you need them to do. So basically that means if you have a web application and you need to delete something, well, have a user that can delete to, to that certain or particular table or database that a user should be able to delete on. And of course, the same goes if you have a, let's say, let, let's say you're creating something like Facebook. And then you need to insert, select and update That is the main stuff a user is doing on the web page. Well, then don't create a user that can do everything on all tables and all databases. Only create a user with a particular access to that table that is needed without the delete. Error leakage is another thing that could lead to security misconfiguration because if you output an actual error message to the screen that the system created, well, it could uh, potentially give the attacker or anyone browsing the web page valuable information about your service or your server. Updated security features are left, disabled or misconfigured. Yes, sometimes when you get a new patch, for example, for a... Um, anything basically many people just click install and and they think oh that's it and that's kind of wrong because in many cases you need to configure those updates updates for security are not context based they are just for the broad audience for the broad service for the broad uh, applications so you need to configure them to be context-based for your part. So that's why I need to configure it. Insecure configuration in web applications or server frameworks. Of course, they kind of go hand in hand with, with what I just said. So you need to make sure that you're configuring your application or your server or your framework or whatever you're using the correct way. Lack of server headers is another thing. Um, secure headers, sorry, <laughs> lack of security headers is another thing. Uh, for example, if you want to make sure that your cookies are not sent, uh, only sent over HTTPS, for example, or you want to make sure that some sort of click jacking header is set on your HTTP uh, re response, you need to, to put in the, the, the correct amount of security headers. Vulnerable components used, that is another really bad thing. I see many people use, let's say, WordPress and you suddenly hear about some some third-party plugin you can install that give the user the ability to create a gallery really fast now the thing is that gallery was created by some user with no interest or maybe well the lack of knowledge about security and it, it the security 
um, things that should be there are not implemented. So, so vulnerable components used is another really bad thing, and it could lead to security misconfiguration. So how common is misconfiguration? Uh, uh, well, it's quite common because it covers so many areas of a system. Uh, imagine a, a full Linux server, you, you have your SSH, you have your web server, you have your whole system with writes to folders and system writes to, to, to this and that, you have your users, you have your own services installed, you have a port, you have your firewall maybe, you have many different things on that server you need to, to uh, configure and be aware of. It's quite common due to the lack of automated deploying tools. So if you're using a, um, a DevOps setup, it could be a really good idea to do the whole job once. Make sure you do all configuration for one good time and then reuse that. I know deployment tools do not really configure services, but it can help you a lot to do all the small things you forget along the way. Of course, some security flaws can be found by automated test tools. Uh, for example, let's say some brute forcing, you, you, you want to find some SQL injection or cross scripting or something, maybe use a fuzzer and a fuzzer is, is, a, is a method to send a lot of input to the application or to the server and see how, how it reacts to that. Of course, automated scans is, is no better than the, the, the actual data you send. So you need a really good list to be, well, enough covered to say I'm confident that that the automated scan is is somewhat okay. But pay attention to to how I, how I wrote my text. It says some can be found, others cannot be found by automated test. Then you need to do a, to take on the the manual testing, where you use your expertise to find the other flaws. Um, yes, one thing is, is another, is, is not all vulnerabilities are as serious as others. There are some that could be potentially more dangerous. Let's say that you have a root user and in some way you can gain access to that root user. That is very bad. Okay. Uh, but let's say you have another less serious user. Let's say some user called web. And the only thing that user can do is, let's say, browse some folders. Um, that is, of course, still bad, but it's not as bad. So you need to kind of weigh off which kind of vulnerabilities are most serious. And if you are creating a risk assessment, maybe maybe even a, a map, a threat modeling map, or all the different threats you have, then create individual risk assessments for those overall threats then you can start to map out how serious kind of different vulnerabilities could be and where you should put your effort to find the next one because there's no reason for you to begin to look at a very very small vulnerability if it's very unsignificant but taking the most significant vulnerability first whenever you're configuring your way out of insecure uh, configuration well that is the way to go so how to fix this? And I kind of already started to talk about it. So uh, a consistent process for server uh, and app hardening could be a really good development plan and strategy. Code review, very important. Configuration, really important. And the whole deployment process of how you're putting your stuff from A to C, from test to production. That is a, a really good idea to, to have, a, have a, a good process there. Consider minimal server uh, a starting point. So a minimal server basically just means that you, you, you only have exactly what you need and no more. Regular consideration of new vulnerabilities, it's a never ending story. So, so always uh, revisit your own plans and revisit how your system is configured. Sometimes new vulnerabilities appear just poof, then there's no vulnerability. Segmentation of systems to reduce risk. It basically means that you separate things. So you you have a you have your file server and your MySQL server and your web server separated. So if there is a contamination of some virus or breach or something, then it's only on the one server, not the other. And maybe they cannot directly go 
to that server, if it makes sense. Automated and online server check. So of course, creating scans with tools, uh, consistently scanning. I'm not saying on a daily basis. I'm not. I'm not even saying on a weekly basis. But I am talking about monthly based in some way. In some systems, you, you do need to do weekly based. And very serious systems, you maybe even need to revisit stuff uh, e e even more. So I have a small demonstration of uh, security misconfiguration. So I'm gonna pull in my VMware here. I'm gonna log into my Kali instance. That I have installed and once again we're gonna use a website called uh, try hack me so I'm gonna take you through the process of how I log into try hack me and what I'm gonna do to access the stuff so I have my desktop and on use Kelly I have to run openvpn and the try hack me openvpn file and my password for my Kelly user. Okay, so the sequence is done. Then I could go to tryhackme.com. And Okay, uh, I just set up my Trihagmi room and I'm sorry that I could not show the whole process. I'm gonna create a video about that at some point, but for now I'm gonna just stick to the fact that I'm on a web page. I'm gonna show you what security misconfiguration is all about. So I've accessed a server uh, through this IP address here, 1010 10, so that's the, the actual private address on the server on tryhackme.com. And I want to state that I am not a sponsor for tryhackme. Um, but I do think they have a really good project going. And I would like to support that by mentioning their website in my videos. So this is the actual page. And from the original just side of it, it looks like any web page. And there is a login formula here. And... It's called pensive, pensive, pensive notes. It's difficult for me to pronounce. Okay, so since this is all about security based configuration, I think it's gonna be a really good idea to just Google the name of the actual website, pensive notes. It even looks like the logo. So I'm gonna guess pensive notes is the name of this system where I can write my notes. So I'm gonna go to Google and type in Pensive notes. And the very first thing I'm gonna get is a GitHub repository by someone called Ninja DAC01 Pensive Notes, a node. Pensive notes is a note taking app for those who wanted to think blah blah blah. Okay, so I'm looking at this page on GitHub now. I'm scrolling down. Uh, installation process and uh, let's see when I installed it after downloading lock in using the default credentials so what we kind of talked about already is default users default credentials is a thing in uh, security misconfiguration it also tells me to make sure you change this password immediately so he or she who made it actually tells that uh, change this I'm just gonna guess that this is probably my password so username and password and we'll log in so that's it we log into the system using the default password and username so of course this is just another thing about uh, security misconfiguration we forgot to change the password all right so let's go back to the slideshow and next time we will talk about something called cross site scripting or XSS and it's the A7 vulnerability risk in the OS top sensors. I hope you like my video and I hope you subscribe and like it and see you next time.